Hello and welcome to this short overview video for Cisco's Firepower Management Center, or FMC. In this video, I'm going to talk about our new user interface, rule hit counters, we'll take a look at some of the more enhanced search capabilities for the access control policies as well as time-based configuration rules. We'll also look at some of the pre-filter policy enhancements and the policy, policy deployment improvements. Let's begin with a look at the new user interface. Now you're probably already familiar with the how-to walkthroughs that we have here within the FMC. Um, these are a series of how-to guides that will take you through in a kind of step-by-step -step guided tour of how to make those particular configurations. For this one we're going to look at how to switch to the new light user interface theme. Um, and when we've selected the how-to we, we choose the option to guide me and as you can see here now it's showing us exactly where to click and, and which options to select. So. For this particular guide, uh, how-to guide, we're going to use the click on the username in the top right-hand corner, and then we're going to select the option to switch to the light theme. In doing so, uh, we move to the new, afresh user interface that we have, and from here we're going to look at the access control policies. Because what I want us to do here is, first of all, uh, I want us to take a look at the hit counts. Now, hit counts themselves have been around, and well, not a new feature; they've been around since version 6.4 of Firepower. Um, but what I'm showing you here is, is how it looks now in the new UI. So once we've selected the device that we want to generate the hit count report on, we hit refresh. And that's going to go away and bring us back the uh, statistics that we're looking for. So when, when this returns, what we see are the hit counts for each of the rules that we have within that particular access control policy on that device. We can either see the last time um, those rules were hit, or we can even choose the column to see when uh, the first time that the, the rules were actually used and, and how the hits registered against them. Now if we close this, and whilst we're in our access control policy, uh, what we're going to do now is actually take a look at one of the new features within the 6.6 .6 release. So this is um, all to do with searching within an access control policy. Now obviously we've only got a few lines in this one, but if you imagine that you've got a, a few hundred lines of access control policy, then the search functionality is actually you know, of great use. So you see here we've got our search rules box at the top, which we click into. And as we come down, we can start to click type into some of the predefined filters that we have. When we do the search, it will highlight the matching rules. If we click on the filter at the top there that you've just seen, it's now only displaying the, only the rules that actually match the search. Now we're going to go into this one uh, and make a change as well while we're here. So we, we've performed the search, we've zeroed it in and now we're modifying this rule. So we're going to add the uh, business categories to this particular rule and save it. Once saved, we can come back in here now and again, let's do a, a pretty much the same search again. So we'll search on the source network and destination networks. But this time, now that we've added um, a, 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 an application field within that rule, we're going to search on the business um, applications that we've just put in there. And again, if we just apply the filter, you can see here now that it's only displaying the rules that match our particular search. Now, we could also filter by device. So this allows us to search the devices that have the same policy applied um, so that we can find rules on, on, on all devices that may have this policy applied to them. Let's edit this again. Let's go into networks. And we'll make a change to the source network object again in this rule. So in this case, we're going to add this particular group. So we've got the group net add it to the source and again hit save. Let's just save the policy and now again let's do let's perform a search. So again this time we can search on our source networks. So if I want to find a rule that has 14 network and group net as source, 15 network as a destination and business as applications, when I hit search you can see again we've just got that one particular rule and it's highlighted that for us so again it shows us exactly what we've searched on uh, and if there are more more than one match found you can see we can use the um, kind of next and previous options as well so now what we're going to do is we're going to edit this rule and you can see that we've actually got a, a, effectively a duplicate rule so we've, we've copied and pasted that so we've got a duplicate rule um, so if we make a change here now and modify the name Let's put in this now, this duplicate rule for, for this particular demo. Hit save. Save the policy. And 
and let's just delete that source from there. So now we've got a different uh, source and destination. So let's save that policy again. And now when we do a search, again, if we start to sort, search for our, our source networks where we find 14, group net, destination is the 15 network, and we'll put our uh, application in again as business. Now when we do the search, you can see we've got multiple options returned, and you can see that they're highlighted in, in, in different colors, and we can cycle through them if we want to. Uh, and again, you know, this is a relatively small policy, but you imagine this with a large policy with, with hundreds of lines, then actually becomes quite a, 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 you know, a useful tool. Now we've got a new button over here, which you've probably just seen there. So we've got the time range. So if we click on that time range icon, this allows us to specify uh, a, a time range that when that policy or when that rule will be active. So here you can see that we've got our start and end times. We can even add a, a recurrence interval. So we can set that to repeat. And we won't save that just now. But ultimately, what this is now giving us is the ability to add time-based rules now within our access control policies. Moving on to our pre-filter policies, if we edit this particular pre-filter policy that we have here, what I want to show you in here is if we edit this policy, and again, we can even specify time ranges now within pre-filters, so not just within the access control policy, but our pre-filters um, also have the ability to have time ranges applied to rules within them. Something else we can do at this stage is if we actually look at the source network here in the group net, we can go and see object details. And that actually lets us see which objects are members of that particular object group. Now, this is kind of just one place we can see this now. And, and if you look through the FMC, you can see that in m many places now, even within access control policies. So let's move to the deployment page. Um, and let's look at the options that we have when it comes to deploying our policies. What we get here now is a view of kind of the changes that are going to be applied. So we kind of get a, a preview of, of what the changes are within the policy before we apply them down to the actual device or, or devices. And we can see here that we've modified the pre-filter policy and the access control policy. And as we scroll down on the right hand side, you can see exactly what those changes are. So you can actually review your changes now before you push the uh, policy down to the device. We've also got the ability to see and select which portions of the policy we might want to push down. So for example, um, by clicking on the selection window over there, we can choose which portion of the policy. So if, we want, if we've only made changes to the NAT policy, for example, we just apply the NAT policy. Up in the top right, you can see there's a new button there that shows us roughly how long this policy would, would expect to take to deploy. So now when we click on the deploy button, it's at around about two minutes, we can hit the deploy. And also one of the other new features we have in the 6.6 .6 release is more information around the actual um, deployment time or the progress of the actual deployment itself. So we've got a better kind of indication of how long it's taking or where it is in the, uh, the current status of that, that particular policy deployment. The idea behind this is that we have a much better idea of how long it's taking for the policy to be deployed down to the device itself. And then ultimately, once we've watched this progress indicator increment, we get a completed policy deployment. Once completed, um, we can actually take a look at the task list as well to look at the history or look at the uh, actual deployment statistics. So we can see here how long the actual deployment took. So we can compare that with the uh, policy deployment estimate. We can look at the history. Um, we can get an audit trail here of which which users actually push, deport, push policies down to um, devices. We can see the transcripts, so if there are any problems, the transcripts might show and indicate the potential issues that, was, that it had during that policy deploy. If we just want to look at deployment history on its own, we can do that through the top menu. And again, here we just get all the jobs that have been um, completed over a you know, specific period of time. Which administrator has done them, um, when, the status of each deployment and again we can also look at the transcripts as well thanks for taking the time to watch this video please do check out the other videos that we have available in this section